on so far. Is this good stuff? Very helpful. All right? A little spin. All right? We're talking about discipline, day one, knowing your numbers, and then at some point, just like Kenneth said, we, it's like, this is a must. Like, got to build a business. All right? So I'm just showing you from a logistical standpoint, mathematics, how you can create a, a kingdom business operating with these different disciplines. You don't have to do it straight to the T, but something to that nature, right, that we could commit to and we rely on God to supply, right? So the reason why I don't profit so much in my coaching calls is because part of my mission and vision given by God is focused on helping single moms, divorced moms, widows, moms in general. The average woman mom brings in less than $40,000 a year. I know the numbers. Look at the different statistics. I would argue it's probably less than that for single moms, divorced moms, widows on average. Then you go into the demographics, Hispanics, blacks, the numbers do vary if you want to get real tight with it. So I know based on their numbers what they can afford or what they could at least work towards affording. Like it's not impossible for a mom to maybe save $50 for the next four or five months after she first discovers me on YouTube, right? She takes a couple months watching the video content, absorbing all the free material, and then she gets her numbers ready. She gets positioned. She gets the line of credit. Maybe four to six months. I got, I got this all mapped out. Four to six months to get positioned, watch the content, get your debt tool, fix your credit, by that time, she has the money to book a call. She books a call, straight strategy into it. She knows what to do for the next four to six months. The next four to six months, she pays off tens of thousands of dollars of debt, maybe a couple thousand dollars of debt, increases her cash flow by $150, $200 a month. Four to six months later, books another call. All right, so maybe by two calls, it's been a year or less, straight strategy. By then, she's doing even better, possibly got a raise at her job because now she's more confident in the things that she does. So she goes to her boss, her employer, and says, I need a raise, right? Because most women, right, no offense to you guys, you guys don't ask for more money in the industry like men do. Um, there was a study where there was like a, a, an ad or something like that uh, in like a, a, a newspaper, and it was shown to men, uh, then women, and I think it was like two jobs, one is the same exact job, one pays higher than the other, and then the women, women were choosing the, the lower paying job, but it's the same job, right? And then I think on, there's a lot of statistics on men asking for more raises, asking for higher positions faster and more money than on average a woman would do. So in addition to women breaking into different industries, increasing the, um, the percentages of women in certain industries, the next barrier is really you, not so much the industry itself, but what you put on yourself and how you hold yourself back, right? Not necessarily what the world, the world's already holding you back in many different ways, right? It's designed that way. But when you throw yourself in there and you start, you know, lacking and not being confident enough. So when I'm working with moms, they start to regain their authority, right? They start to regain some confidence. They get the raise. Now they got my money. And then maybe they enroll in some sort of lifetime coaching service. Not too many coaches do it because it's too overwhelming. I do it because I know what I'm assigned to do. And the right people that come into my life, they, they sign up. We get into lifetime coaching and that such. So I explained to you commercial jurisdiction, how I operate there. Yesterday, I talked a little bit about the ecclesiastical sovereign jurisdiction, God's jurisdiction, 
dating all the way back to when Jesus established his ministry and charged his disciples going out into the world and building the physical structures in place. So I now have the finance geek ministry, okay? The finance geek ministry is all about helping me help you grow the kingdom. Help me help you grow the kingdom. Where you give in exchange for financial counseling. When you give in the jurisdiction of the Lord, his domain, which is the whole entire world, but, we, but when we're dealing in the physical, our bodies, right, we, we have these adhesion contracts on us, whether you like it or not, according to the citizenship where you dwell, okay? So yesterday I was talking about, you know, we've got like dual citizenship. We're citizens of the kingdom and you're a citizen of the United States. In the United States, anything and everything could be potentially taxed unless you do everything according to the tax code. Well, in that very tax code is a jurisdiction set aside for people of faith where you can have a faith-based organization, right? or a integrated auxiliary trust is another word, or a convention, or a unincorporated association, or a self-supporting ministry, right? And in this particular jurisdiction, according to the tax code, we are mandatorily tax accepted, okay? In the tax code itself, which means I don't have to file, I don't have to notify of the governments of the world of what I do. What I do between you and I is our business and God's, nobody else. This is why the cryptocurrency world is exploding because it's all about peer-to-peer -peer transactions where there is no third-party interference. We have complete anonymous transactions going on with no merchant processing fee or in many cases in the crypto world, very, 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 very little right? And that transaction is private. Nobody needs to know, right? The dangers, obviously, you can think about all the evil things that can occur with that, which is sex trafficking, human trafficking, drug trafficking, you name it. So in any jurisdiction, evil can occur. Let's remember that. Just because you get in God's kingdom doesn't mean evil stops, okay? Evil still occurs, right? Evil is sitting at the front row, not you, but you know what I mean. Like, when we start talking kingdom, the devil shows up, like, with his whole army. Because he knows the dangers of righteous works and how it can eliminate his entire, you know, hold on the world. So he shows up with guns ready, right? Guns blazing. He's attacking your very you know, uh, uh, structures that you believe in. So in the finance geek ministry, look how you see the drastic difference for an hour of my time. I provide financial counseling, right? In exchange for your currency, say $200, I do 10% goes to the finance geek ministry, which is a ministry of finance focused on finance, financial solutions, right? Just like there's ministries that are focused on outreach. There's ministries that focus on baptizing people. There's ministries that um, raise worship teams, right? And prayer meetings and all different types of ministries. So it's like this conglomerate of different services that the church can provide, you know, and there's a, you know, a head, right? So with that, in this particular ministry, 10% of 200, 20 bucks, tithe, 10% save in the church, in the ministry, which that goes to a, what's called um, a, a grain house, right? Call it that, right? And that money will be stored up, multiplied before it gets spent. It's going to figure out how the ministry can acquire cash flow vehicles like real estate, small business, service-based businesses to multiply the fruit of that particular ministry. Another 10% will be co-vested, okay, not invest. 
in a covest. The ministry and the members of it cooperatively come together in common unity in a commonwealth system, and we covest together, which will remit royalties through a relationship and royalty sharing covenant. We discussed that yesterday, right? Then there's the offering, right? 10%, another 20 bucks, okay? 30% living, right? There's your still have to pay expenses there. 60 bucks, 15% operational costs. In my case, um, my commercial business is going to supplement the operational costs of the ministry to produce a higher what's called return of liberty. So in reality, the return of liberty is the 30 and the 30, so that'd be $60. Notice how the quote-unquote profit in commercial jurisdiction was 2159 higher amount. And then in ecclesiastical jurisdiction, God's jurisdiction, essentially, the return of liberty is 3x, right? 60 from 21. And I provided for less. Again, because the ministry is focused on working with mothers, single moms. Now, not that I don't work with men. I work with plenty of men. Tim right there is a lifetime client of mine. But what happens is men like Tim resonate with my story because he also came from a single, has, um, grew up with a single mom. I grew up with a single mom, right? So when I rely on God for what his purpose is for my life, he positions, he causes people's hearts to open up and give beyond what I am charging beyond. And I have tons of people. I have a guy there's a platform I use called Patreon. It's great for content creators, okay? I got on Patreon in 2018. Fast forward to 2022. There's, there's a few people in the world I barely have any communication with at this point. They're, they're like financially independent. They're doing well, right? They have given over $6,000 to my ministry, the, the, the work that I do. And then I take that money and then I provide free coaching opportunities, free sessions. So in the folder, here's another action step. There's a, a thing that says free coaching opportunity and there's, a, there's like a seven step system to it where if you lack fiat currency because of your lack of management, lack of stewardship, right? I'm putting the pressure on you. You lack money for the time being. You lost a job, you're Income went down. There was a lady yesterday that her income went down. Okay. Well, would you be willing to exchange social currency in exchange for financial coaching? Right? If that's a yes, you follow the steps below. That involves subscribing to my YouTube channel, liking a video, commenting, sharing with two people, getting all your numeros, right? Getting your numbers in line. You do all these things. I'm happy to give you my time in exchange for that currency, social currency. Like, social currency today is seriously valuable, right? Because it's what gets us in front of, or in my case, it gets me in front of more eyes, more attention, more people watch from all over the world, right? I specialize in the United States, but I got people in other countries that have given me money in Australia, Canada, UK. Crazy stuff, right? They have their pretty cool accents and I'm like what did you say how does that work um, so any questions on this stuff because what I want to do is now step into a, a case study right and I think we're going to go to one of the young folks right any questions this is good take your notes lock it down I'm going to erase it because I want to do a, a, a case study now so did you like that? I show you my numbers, full transparency. Hey, here's what I'm at. Here's how it's going. Here's what I'm working on. I'm learning. If I make mistakes, if I say something wrong, I am well aware that I can course correct. I can fix my mistakes. If I made a mistake on there, if I said something that's not biblical, I am more than happy to be corrected, right? I want to be corrected. I want to make mistakes so I can find the truth as quickly as humanly possible because I don't know when I'm going to go. It could happen tomorrow, right? 
So I just want to make sure I maximize every second here on planet Earth, right, for the time being. So with that being said, let's get you a mic. Sure Perfect. Thing. Yep, okay. good. So let's start with, uh, just give me your, your, your name so I can give me some time to erase the board here. Yeah, sure. uh, name, a little bit about yourself, and then we'll dive right into the numbers. A little birdie told me you had all your, nerb, all your numbers in line, so... Uh, I do, except all, every, right. except all of the interest rates to a T. I do have a few of them, but... That's fine. We'll work with uh, it. But my name is Micah Hall. Uh, I'm a software engineer. Uh, and like Pastor said, I'm the minister of music here. Um, and I also um, have my own business on the side. Uh, so I have a quick question for you while you finish up those last few. So I have a contract that's beginning Monday uh, that gives me a significant boost uh, in my income. Should I include that in today's numbers? Because I haven't written out for both. The bonus? Uh, it's not a bonus. So it's a contract for my LLC that starts on Monday. That, it's not current right now, but it does start. Gotcha. So it's money, new money coming in. Yeah, it's going to be coming in. Yeah, let's count it. Include it. All right. I'm ready when you are. So let's start with monthly net income. You are a business owner? Yes, correct. And I also work not. And you five. also work. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So we can put it all together if you like, just for simplicity. Okay. And then if anything, we could separate if there's any confusion. Okay. So the income uh, with everything right now would be sixteen thousand four hundred and ten dollars. Sixteen five, I guess. Sixteen thousand four hundred ten. Yep. Okay. Um, my expenses would be uh, five thousand three hundred dollars. Five thousand three hundred. Correct. Business and personal. Yes. Not bad. Okay. And my debt would be one hundred sixteen thousand dollars and seventy three. Oh, sorry. Yeah, one hundred sixteen thousand and seventy three. Cash flow. Cash flow would be for that would be eleven thousand one hundred and ten dollars. Say again. Eleven thousand one hundred and ten. Okay. From this net cash flow, do you have? Well, I'll ask it this way: From the fifty-three hundred, did you include tithing, saving, investing, giving? Everything, and I, and I actually added a little bit too, just to make sure in okay. case I forgot anything. So you're saying that at the end of every month, on average, I net eleven thousand. Hundred and ten dollars, on average, sits in a bank account and it doesn't have a, a purpose just yet. I will. So the the business uh, that I added adds a lot uh, to what. It, okay, the business has a lot. So you're literally stepping in. You, how long have you been making that money? Uh, well, uh, what it would be without this would be uh, six thousand eight hundred and ninety. So it, it adds. This is another, new. Yeah, the this new money. New. Yep, on top of that. Okay, okay, so that's why we're in a, a really good position. Okay, um, now, what are some of the questions that you have? And then you can kind of lay out for us some goals. What are you, what are you trying to accomplish? So for me, uh, I'm getting married to my beautiful fiance that's right next to me. Uh, and we, we're actually paying uh, out of pocket for it. So um, that's a big chunk. So I'm trying to leverage how to save uh, quickly and... Uh, um, I would love nothing more than to get that debt to be debt free. So it's basically uh, just leveraging how to save and um, how to get rid of that debt. So how to save. I heard that. Mm -hmm. You're getting married. What, what's the timeline on that? October. This year? Yep, this year. Okay, so we're, you're already in the works of like funding that. You said you're going to yeah, correct. Okay. Have an idea of how much? When it's all said and done, it'll be 35000 but um, a lot of that's already paid down, um, and I only have like a few months of payments yet left, so I kind of added that to the debt. Oh, it's in there. Yeah. In okay. The yep. So it's not new debt? No. It, nope. It's included it's in my in numbers. In there. Yep. You're, you're, you're paying it down? Correct. Okay, cool. All right, so we could talk about 
the how to save one, because I like that a lot. Whenever I come into windfalls of cash, like I mentioned earlier, I have my little my little process that just holds me accountable. Do you have one um, of your own? Anything similar to what I said? Not really. Not really. Not just kind of sporadic, you know, okay, cool, all right. Mm-hmm. So here's how I formulate the those numbers because as as cleanly as I laid it out for you, the reality is I have all these other streams of income that comes in, so it can be somewhat difficult to actually uh, you know, manage it on a per transaction basis. I just know that when money comes in, as it comes in, I separate it. Does that make sense? Are right, you following me with that? Okay, cool. So I will take the cash flow, 11,110. This assumes that you'll be, we're going to assume that you'll be cash flowing for the next 12 months at that number, right? Do you assume that would be the case? Yes. All right, so 11,000, 110 times 12. So that means I'll be cash flowing 133,320. Now, I'm assuming you didn't account for taxes. Uh, yes, I did. Cause, or, yeah, on my business income, I just took 15% out just because that's a practice, my brother. You sure? Yep, I took it out. Yep. Because how are you? I'm, I'm amazed. Um, do you live with family? Uh, no. You live on your, on your own? Yep. I'm You're right. renting? Yep, renting. How is this man doing this? This is amazing. <laughs> this is amazing. So that means this guy is like Dave Ramsey to the core. <laughs> Rice and bean diet. Uh, looks like I see some, some <laughs> muscles. He's working out. I could learn something from him. He could send me his, see, I'm, this is my takeaway. It can be done if you are serious, like you can cut back. Like I'm not a huge fan of it. I don't like the mindset I go into with it sometimes, so I just say I need to make more money. But there are times where you have to go into this conservation mode, right? And he is clearly doing that because I'm asking him, like, are you sure you accounted for taxes? Because... You know, taxes, well, you're probably going to enter into a, a, a new tax bracket, I'm assuming, which is probably going to be higher. I don't know how the state of Ohio works, but I would definitely, like, account for it. So all I'm going to do is just take from the 133, 320 of the cash flow. I'm going to times that by 10%. And, you know, I'm just going to say, hey, maybe uh, taxes, additional might run into something, I don't know, depends on what kind of accountant you have, right? That 133, 320, I do another 10%, and I say, I'm going to save this cash flow. Now it's a matter of where do I save the cash flow, okay? I told you guys earlier that for me, I store my cash flow in cash value life insurance. It's money I'm not going to touch. This is considered emergency funds savings, sinking funds, whatever you want to call it. I personally, if I'm cash flowing that kind of money, I need to get it out of my eyesight. I'm Puerto Rican. I'm Colombian. I like to go out. I like to dance too. I like to get into, I was practicing my, my worship and I was, I was watching y'all. I'm like, yeah, you know, cause I grew up Catholic. So, you know, it's just like in the name of the father and the son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated, right? Versus here, it's like, uh, what? Oh, I was like, what's going on? Holy Spirit, something in my heart. Something in my heart was getting excited. I was like, oh, my goodness. (laughs) All right, stop playing, stop playing. All right, back to the numbers. So cash value life insurance in a nutshell i personally deal with whole life you might hear on the internet iul blah, 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 a bunch of different strategies i stick to whole life personally because major banks corporations and mega churches acquire cash value life insurance typically whole life insurance right and they design it for maximum cash value use and minimum premium okay so They will use cash value life insurance to fund your 401k plans, your 403bs, your TSPs, 
your pensions, your workers' compensation, your health care, everything. If you ever wondered how corporations make pay that, they do it through life insurance. Pretty amazing, right? Life insurance predates the IRS. Whole life insurance specifically predates the IRS, 1913. That's when the IRS started. Whole life insurance has been around since 1860, maybe, 1870, something like that. So from that point up until now, you look at the tax code, section 7702, and there's like another section as well, and it just covers how life insurance is, is a particular product in the jurisdiction of the United States where it's not taxable, right, unless certain things that you do with the policy can cause it to become a taxable event. With my teachings on YouTube, I help people avoid doing that, right? So I would take the, the 13, 332, right? And then the, the taxes itself, what's pretty unique about taxes, typically, as a business owner, you're either paying it quarterly. I think nowadays it's mandatory. I think you have to pay it quarterly now, if I'm not mistaken. But I will, if I have the lump sum of money, right, when I'm working with clients, we could funnel your certain expenses, maybe taxes, maybe um, different business operational costs. We can store it in the life insurance, then pull it out later, use it, right? Before you use it, you swipe the credit card, get the points, then use the cash to pay the credit card off. Meanwhile, you continue to earn money tax-free, compounded annually, right, year over year. And that money can keep being used. It's very liquid, right, things like that. So there's a lot of benefits there. A uh, ton of videos on how I uh, process all of that. But we can also take the 133, 320 cash flow, times it by two-thirds, right, or 66%. And you're going to get 87991 right? And I can say, okay, um, I could save aggressively up to this number is what I would feel comfortable with if I was making the type of money that you're making at the time. And this is about what I was making in 20. 19 anyways I was bringing like average 15 K a month 16 K a month so I I did that I took my cash flow times it by two-thirds and I said okay I want to be able to put this money away but I'm also going to give it a purpose because I want to deploy it into my business again or invest it later on right so that is something to think about uh, if you want to go ahead and do it now did you also you also mentioned paying off debt right so there's that component of becoming debt-free. So um, to your knowledge, have you been exposed to the velocity banking concept? Yes, I have. So you, like me, personally? Yep. Oh, or between you and Pastor, I was on your clubhouses, and then it got me. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. So do you currently have a debt tool? I don't. Don't. What's your credit score like? Bad. Uh, I would say 610 probably right now. 610. So with the cash flow that I have... I would absolutely hire a credit repair expert in this community or I have a credit repair lady I really trust. She's worked with all my clients. Brittany Green's her name. You may be familiar with her. Um, she is phenomenal, right? So I would throw a couple dollars into that. It's a couple hundred dollars. In your case, it's not a, it's not a, a, a hard thing to swing. So that would be action step number one for me is credit repair and ideally I want to get to 720 or higher um, you currently rent right so you don't have a mortgage so we don't we wouldn't be able to get an, a home equity line of credit but we can get a personal line of credit or a business line of credit depending on where this debt is located is it on the personal side uh, bit of both. Yes, G a government from student loans and then not as much personal. Okay. Can we go ahead and break down the um, the debts? Yeah, right? sure. One by one. Let's do that. So my car is going to be 42873 
42873 That's a car, right? Mm-hmm. Monthly payment? Uh, it's in the 700s, but I pay 850 So what's, what's the exact payment? Uh, I want to say 743 78 I'm just looking at it. $743.78, but you pay 850 Yes. Okay. And do you have the interest rate? I don't, not the exact. You don't have the interest rate. Okay. I, I, I know it's at least 14. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty. 14? Uh, maybe, maybe 12. But I didn't do a down payment, so. Okay, that's a, that's a, so we know it's somewhere around 14%. Yeah. That's a killer. Okay. And um, do you know if it is amortized or simple interest? Uh, simple interest. Simple interest. Okay, so it's not as horrible um, as amortized 14%, but it's still pretty bad. We want to get rid of that. So, uh, okay, next debt. Uh, would be student loans as well, would be 42000 And that's in deferment, so I don't know what that is. 42000 flat? Uh, I don't have an exact. Okay, that's fine. So we'll just say 42, student loans, deferred. So I'm not going to pay attention to that as of right now. Uh, what else? Um, and then I have, um, I counted the wedding stuff in there as well, which is, I would say, about 20000 Say again? My, uh, my wedding expenses, I counted that stuff in there as well. Is it on a card? Paying monthly, but it's going to fall off. It's on a credit card, right? No, no, just paying, the, just the people we're using, luckily, we can the, just pay monthly. Okay, so the people you're using, you're able to pay on a monthly yep, basis. Okay. Sign the contract. I'm learning too because I'm gonna get married yeah. soon as well. So I'm gonna try and get. I'm gonna be like, how does that work? Okay. Yeah, so we've been lucky as far as that goes. Cool, cool, cool. So that is just, um, like uh, we call that like invoice debt, right? Like it's something I gotta pay. So there's no interest mm -hmm. on that. It's just that's the cost, right? right. So that's a, an expense. Okay. So we're just dealing with that. Basically. Not bad. Okay, cool. So this is definitely my first step. Um, the the car, is it registered in your name or in the business? I'm mine. You're on. Okay, so, mm -hmm. yeah, so probably most more than likely we definitely want to acquire a personal line of credit. How much do you make the your, from your job personally? Um, uh, monthly? It yeah. It would be $5,816. So you're like a 70K? A uh, 90. So I add 90? in. 90? Yeah, okay, I have okay. another stream of income. All right. So 90K a year. Cool. So we got good income. How long you been rocking around that income personally? Uh, probably at least five, six years. I okay. actually went down during the pandemic for security, so. Okay. Beautiful. Um, where do you currently bank at? Chase. That's it. That's it. Okay, so we currently bank at Chase. And what we want to do is we want to research credit unions in Ohio, right? So I personally like to start with local credit unions in my state within 20 miles range. Then I'll go state credit union. Then I'll go federal or nationwide. Then I end up at major banks. So I know Chase just does credit cards. They've got credit cards that are pretty valuable, but they don't do personal, revolving, unsecured line of credit, right? So you can write that. That's like the full term. P-lock is for short, but it's a personal, unsecured, revolving line of credit. And there's a question right here. Let's get a mic over to him if we can, possible. And then I'm going to come back to you, sir. I had a business account at Chase, and they do offer business lines of credit at Chase. Business line of credit. Yes. Okay, but not a personal, right? No. Probably not. Okay. That, okay. So, on the business side, we could do a uh, business line of credit. So there's two ways to go about this, my friend. Two ways to go about this. This is something that I know of. I'm not an expert in, but I do know people that know how to do this. Okay. So option one for this particular case study here, okay? Option one, I get a personal line of credit, preferably 
at a local credit union. You live in Ohio, right? Yeah, correct. Okay. So preferably local credit union in Ohio. For my, for my clients and viewers watching at home, if anyone's living in Ohio, if you know of a credit union, definitely put it in the comment section if you know of them. Um, but I want, I want the crowd to also look up credit unions, and if you know the name, just write it down real quick, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come to you. Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to write it down. So option one, he can go to a local credit union, get a personal, unsecured, revolving line of credit. He could also, with his cash flow, he could, depending on how much cash he already has on hand, right, maybe he's got, maybe he got savings and stuff, he could also get a secured line of credit at an interest rate between 2 and 4% right? Like nothing, peanuts, right? Very, very, very low rate. And that could be a great way of building credit. So that's one option. I could go the unsecured route, or I can get a secured personal line of credit, okay? At an interest rate, I just got to beat 14. That's not hard. <laughs> Most PLOCs right now with interest rates rising, I'm seeing them at 8, 9, 10, 11, Anything above 12%, 15%, I just, I ignore it. I'll tell the client, listen, you probably just don't have the credit score right now. Stick to debt snowball, debt avalanche, we'll work our way up, and then we can move on to, you know, getting the right line of credit. But you'll typically see credit unions with these lower rates, like 7 8 9%, right? And even though the rate may be high, Yesterday, we talked about what the effective rate, what I actually pay in interest, which is more like you take, say, 9%. I can manipulate that all the way down to like 4, right, 3, in some cases 0 with the help of credit cards and cashback rewards, okay? Brother Denzel, um, LFCU would be a good credit union too. Oh, Mark, okay. The Light Family Credit Union. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I'm trying to get them to see this. LFCU, LFCU, right? Light Family Credit Union. Ooh, I gotta declare that. LFCU. I like that. And in the church, it would be called a non banking financial institution. That's, that's the kingdom word for it, right? Uh-oh. Let me stop. Come back here. Numbers. Numbers, numbers, numbers. Okay. Option one. Clear? Yes. Yep. You already know the videos. You already know the process of having a relationship with a bank, right? Asking the right questions. Is this a line of credit? You look at the terms and agreements. You're cool on that, right? Yep. All right, cool. Nice. Option two. You might like this, okay? Sort of um, more of an instant type of a thing where we could uh, take the majority, maybe all of this. I don't know about student loans, um, but I don't even want to pay attention to it because it's undeferred. But just this alone, the, the car itself, with credit repair that's on the personal side, you could also consider building your business credit, business credit, which involves building business credibility, having a business address, having your um, Duns and Bradstreet number, your Paydex score, having a NAV account, having uh, trade line accounts. There's a whole process, right? Six to 12 months on average, I believe, is the process, right? But what happens is you can get access to business credit lines via credit cards, you have to watch out for these um, companies that, that will just claim, oh, yeah, 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 you get a line of credit, you do velocity banking. No, no, no. Most of them, they're, just, they're talking about credit cards, right? So you want to be careful. There's some companies charge quite a bit. I know a guy that's very knowledgeable. I, he's a kingdom man out of South Florida area. I've met him multiple times, done a ton of business with him. His name's Sebastian Boyer. He's on my YouTube channel, and he also has a YouTube channel as well called The, the Approved Guy. The Approved Guy. Um, that's his YouTube channel. And so if you were to go the route of building business credit, you could essentially move the whole 42, right, possibly all of it, 
into business credit at 0% for, say, 12 to 18 months on a multitude of credit cards, right? I'm not an expert on this. I just know of it. I know it works. I've had clients that do it. So you, you build up your business credit, do the business, by using your personal credit score. So you're still going to need to build your personal credit score because you're going to have to personally guarantee those credit cards in case you default, right? But you get access to these 0% credit cards, say two or three of them adding up to, say, 50 grand, 70 grand, 100 grand. You can get a ton of, of credit when you go this route. And you just you pay the balance transfer fee between 2 and 5% typically with these kinds of cards. Then there is a fee to work with the company if you decide to work with the company. Can you do it by yourself? Yes, it may take longer. You might make a mistake. So I, you know, with your cash flow, doesn't hurt to invest with someone, right? And what you pay them can come right out of the credit card. So you won't feel it in the cash flow. You won't feel it. It'll be here. Now it's at 0%. The thing is, the cost to do business with someone to do this and the cost of the balance transfer fee pales to what you're paying in interest over here, right, so to speak. And the fact that you just went from 14% to zero and you moved the debt from personal to business, that account no longer shows up, should boost your credit score a lot of benefits here. This is something to consider. It's more tedious, requires more work, but I think you're a man of, of, of good works, <laughs> just based on the numbers alone. Plus, long term, this will help you big time, right? Just having access to, like, I mean, we're talking Amex, Discover, Capital One, with these really cool credit card offers, 12, 18, sometimes 24 months balance transfer. And then you can just pay the monthly minimum on it, Right. Meanwhile, you could be stacking your cash flow in where <laughs> the the cash value life insurance. Right. You could stack it up in here for the time being so you can overfund a whole life insurance policy on yourself or split it between you and wife. Right. And then you're, you're building it up throughout the year. Then you can borrow from your bank. What's your last name? Paul. Hall, mm -hmm. the bank of Hall, mm -hmm. right? So you can establish your own bank, bank of Hall, right? And then people of the Halls go to Hall, right? Anybody with a last name of Hall can go to Hall down the line, right, later on. Just like Rodriguez, there's a bunch of Rodriguez's out there in the world. They can come to Rodriguez when the time comes as I build my bank and say, oh, we share the last name, your kingdom. Yes, kingdom, cool, okay. Here's a lending opportunity, right? Or you can play in commercial jurisdiction, become a lender there and earn like crazy rates with, um, uh, you know, Lending Tree and um, what's that? There's this other company, Prosper. Anybody know a Prosper? Right, they they got these um, lending opportunities. There's these there's these um, you can do micro lending with uh, people, all kinds of things. So this is a really cool option, where all the debt would move into zero. The strategy, in my opinion, I would pay the monthly minimum payment because I'm no longer getting charged any interest for the time being. So I'll pay the monthly minimum payment across one, two, three, however many different cards I would uh, get. I would stack the cash flow, work with an insurance agent. I'm also licensed as an insurance agent. By the way, one of the greatest industries for really anyone to dive into, um, the, the barrier to entry is not that difficult to become a life insurance agent. The cost is not that much, and the reality is majority of insurance agents are older white males retiring. So there is a vast um, demand for life insurance, and there's a huge shortage of licensed life insurance agents, 
And then when you look at the demographics, Hispanics and blacks, oh my goodness, like there is a super shortage there, right? So it's an amazing opportunity to, you know, grow some money there. And that's probably why your pastor is licensed as well. Um, That is, you know, residual passive income, couple hours sitting with a client, seeing what, what it's worth. So coming back to the point here, um, any questions on this monthly minimum payment for the, the time period, you stack the cash, you can consider um, positioning yourself to get a cash value life insurance policy. The marketing term is called infinite banking or becoming your own banker. That's a marketing term or cash flow banking or tax free banking. It's all marketing. But the reality is you're either going to end up with a whole life policy because you're an individual or an IUL, okay? I personally do not use IUL for the concept of infinite banking. The concept of infinite banking says that you, the goal is to recapture cash flow, right? To redirect your savings dollars, money that is emergency funds, money that you're setting aside for, you know, long-term purchase of a house, vacation. It's, It's money that's supposed to be safe, tax-free, liquid, guaranteed growth. Um, In an IUL, there's an additional, um, the other lady mentioned it, there's additional costs, there's additional um, fees and risk. I'm not against IUL, but the way it can be sold by insurance agents is very, very misleading. It's supposed to be better than whole life in terms of the performance of the cash value. But how it is sold is that it's better than the stock market which I don't agree with necessarily, right? That's how it's sold, that they say you can beat the stock market or you can outperform the stock market. The reality is when you look at the actual performance, that's not necessarily the case. And we're just coming out of the greatest bull run ever, right, from 2008, 9, 10 till now. So if you stick with whole life because you're trying to, what, save your money, grow your money, and have liquidity to it, you can consider this part of your strategy. That would be great. I think this is what I do personally. Again, all opinions here, right? You're free to, you know, make your make your own decision. I'm just showing you the different options, right? Or you could um, go with option one. Any questions there? Or go right, further. Nope. Cool. Other than that, I don't. Anything else additional? Well, I think. Um I know Pastor mentioned it to me. Uh, with Velocity Banking, how much different would that be uh, as far as killing the debt? How would Velocity Banking perform? Yeah. yeah. I mean, how would I kill my debt, debt using Velocity Banking? So if we did, let's say, option one, because option two implies that we're not necessarily doing Velocity Banking for that zero percent we're just we're just paying the monthly minimum or you can do what pastor did where he divided it and just paid monthly payments that's cool too okay. but if you wanted to exercise this cash flow in an investment or in your business to generate more income well by the time this expires you can just write a check right you'd have the money it's not a big deal right but let's just go over if you acquired a say a twenty five thousand dollar line of credit Right, and I'll use a high interest rate. Say we get nine percent. I know you could probably do better. We take twenty-five k. Here's my rule. We times that by sixty-six percent. Right, two thirds. That's sixteen five. Right. So sixteen five would most likely be my chunk because of your income matching the amount of money you make, right? You could go a little higher, say upwards of 20 if you feel comfortable. That's assuming you get 25. We could get more, 30, 35, maybe more than that, right? But on the personal side, say anywhere chunk amount between 16, 5, 20,000. Okay, cool. From there, that would go into that balance, right? And then from there, we just do velocity banking. So let's say you did a 
$20,000 chunk. So that would knock the balance down in half, would it not? Right, nearly 50%, so 42,873 minus 20,000 principal, right? When we make chunks, I usually tell my clients, call the institution, the mortgage company, the loan company, when you're going to make that chunk. Because what they'll do sometimes, they'll take his 20 grand and they could hold it or they'll apply it to his um, next payment, right? So sometimes your mortgage company, you go to make an extra payment on the 24th of this month, but your payment's not due till the 5th or 1st or 5th of next month. They will hold that payment, then apply it on your due date where that extra payment that you made will cover that next month's payment. And then, then what's left is principal versus having all the money be principal, right? See how they get you, right? So you want to call all the time when you're doing that. You want to call. Um, and so that's what I would tell him to do. You call the car company, say, I want to make a principal only payment, P-O-P, principal only payment. Write that down. Call them. Get someone on the line. Have a live person. I want to make a principal only payment. Do you hear me? A principal only payment on that very day so that it gets processed within one to two business days. And then you see that balance drop. It should drop to 22873 when I make that principal uh, uh, only payment, right? And then when I make the actual 743 payment, because it's simple interest, his payment's going to drop with simple interest car loans, and I think with some amortized car loans, your payment will actually drop, I think, with amortized. I know for sure with simple interest, it, I believe it drops because the, um, if I'm not mistaken, the, the way the interest, it got canceled. It's no longer there, right? So that's how that would work. Balance drops. He now owes 20 on the liner credit. And then we look at his uh, income, which majority of it is business, okay? So with a personal line of credit, again, I, with talking with the accountant, right, if you have one, you let them know what you're doing. Say, hey, I've got my LLC, business checking account, personal checking account, PLOC. Preferably, I would like that to be at the same bank. If you're cool with moving your money to the different credit union, this is also a bit of a tedious task. It'll take some time to put that in. But ideally, I want business checking account because you're a business owner. You're making income in two different locations. Personal checking account, that's where your paychecks land. And then I got the PLOC, right? I move money out of the PLOC, 20 grand, personal checking account. Personal checking account pays the car. Principal only payment. That's done. I now owe money on the personal line of credit, right? So my debt didn't increase or decrease. It stayed the same, right? It stayed the same. No magic here. We still owe 42873 It's just in a different location now. At 9%, we're going to ma manipulate that down lower. Follow me? All good? Cool. So now at this point... The day he makes that chunk payment of 20, I want to make it the, the day he gets paid, right? The, the time of the month where he has the most amount of money in his account. So he has his checking account, his business checking account. He can move because LLCs, you have an LLC? Yep. It's just a pass-through entity. So he can pass the money through to the personal into the line of credit, it parks there. Paycheck parking is what some people have called it on the internet. So he parks his paychecks in the line of credit, the 16410, and brings the 20 all the way down to like four and some change, right? Now, based on his cash flow alone, and depending on how much money 
right, we can get of line of credit. If we were to look at debt snowball itself, right, just debt snowball. Debt snowball says you take the 743.78, you take the, you know, the cash flow, and you make an extra payment each and every month, right? All we're doing in reality, when you're dealing with high cash flow here, I often deal with this with clients. When I, when I have clients that have high, high cash flow, the difference in this situation with just one debt like this, you could easily assume that debt snowball will take you four months, right? Roughly, probably less, 42,873, 42,873 divided by 1,110 is 3.8 months. Then you include, excuse me, the monthly payment, right? We're talking debt snowball, three months, three and a half months. Velocity banking, probably the same timeline. I just pay less interest. So that's all I accomplished here. The, the, the timeline's very close. Velocity banking in this situation probably wins by like a hair, right? A couple, you know, a month or two, not even two months early. Like we're talking maybe a month and again, it depends on how much credit you can get. If it was a $50,000 line or something like that, or if you, know, if you had a home equity line of credit, it would be like in one shot, we make a chunk, it's done. And now you're just paying less interest, right? So that's all Velocity Banking did here. Not a you know, huge, oh my God, situation. Um, and that's fine. You know, sometimes velocity, that's what velocity banking is sometimes. It's very close sometimes. Other situations, we, we, with debt snowball, when you factor in everybody's, you know, debt in your situation, you add up all, all your debt, like the lady yesterday that was over half a million in debt, doing debt snowball, she'd probably be debt-free in 9 to 13 years on average. That's what debt snowball typically can do right, as opposed to 30, 9 to 13. So that's cutting that in half. Velocity banking should be able to do that in five to seven years or less simply because of interest manipulation for the most part. That's, that's all we're doing. We're just lowering the cost, the interest cost, right? And then obviously the timeline as well. That timeline is huge. You're getting access to the cash flow that much faster. So is that pretty clear, transparent, right? Like, honestly, I, I like option two a little bit better because we're talking like if I make the connections, the right connections, in the meantime, you, you could make extra payments towards the car, right? For say this month and maybe the next two months by the time and then you move the rest over, that's cool. Do you have anything going on like, like other than getting married like other like big expenses coming up or in the business, anything like that. Next will be just home. So we're just that's next is a home. For. Yep. But that's down the line, down right? The line. Yep. Okay. So when I work with clients, I like to ask that because sometimes um, we don't account for different things, and so we we send our money, and then you know. So I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna challenge you a little bit more to Go even ahead. break it down, even more basic to those who are maybe new to the whole concept. So let's say his total debt, 116000 Can you show them like that monthly breakdown where let's say he's using the velocity banking strategy and boom, I take this amount, I put it towards it, and what month are we in, y'all? June? Mm -hmm. Is this June? All right, I put it in June. Then July, I do this. Then August, I do this in September so that they can really see exactly how to how to get if he wanted to eliminate that 116,000 that mm -hmm. he had 116,000 I want this done before my wedding is it possible or even you know uh, a little bit after but what would it look like yeah. when would he be debt free yeah, so if he did that for full transparency because the 42 is on deferred I don't think it would be effective to focus my time and energy on paying something off that's not charge me interest. So what I want to do is just, let's say it is charging him interest, 
and he has to make payments right now. And let's just use the 116 number, right? And let's put the infinite banking concept on the side, right? And let's just say his main focus is just pay off debt, right? And he wants to use the velocity banking concept, right? Let's say we can get access to $40,000 personal line of credit. Call it 9%. Let's give that interest, say, 6%, right? Usually student loans are like 5, 6 nowadays, probably more than that. 40K, same rules. We do 66% of leverage, preferably. That number gets me 26.4. All right, see, he chunks that amount. And I owe the 116.073. So 116.073 minus 26.4. That balance goes down to 89,673. All right, that's how I'm going to write it for the month of June, let's say. 89,673 is in... The, the two loans there, but we still owe 116.073 total, right? We, we still understand that, right? Because we just moved it here, okay? So now I owe 26.4. All my income goes into the line of credit. So minus 16,410. Remember how we were doing yesterday, how we were um, mapping out the cost? Of borrowing, you guys remember that? So this is income. That brings the balance down to 9,990. Okay, great. All right, balance. Expenses, 5,300. Nothing got paid off, so cash flow didn't increase. We follow with that, so it didn't get paid off. He just made a lump sum chunk to it. In this case, we would attack this debt first out of the two, all right? So 5,300, that's expenses. Now I'm at 15,290, okay? That's my ending balance for that month. Now, in his 5,300 credit card usage, right, we can reduce our, our borrowing costs. So I'm not even going to run that. I don't want to waste too much time on that. But I just want to look at that 9% and see how, how low can we bring that 9%, right? So I look at 26.4 times 9%. It's 2,376 divided by 365. That's $6.00. 50 cents a day. Balance goes down to as low as 9,990 times 9% divided by 365. $2.46 a day. And do it with me with the calculator, right? On your phone. So we get the same numbers. Expenses come out, balance goes up. 15,290 times 9%. Divide by 365. What am I doing? I'm getting the daily uh, cost of borrowing, all right? And then I'm going to get the average cost of borrowing in a 30-day window, right? So the way I do that, I add the three numbers throughout the month, right? Highest balance, lowest balance, ending balance. Highest balance, lowest balance, ending balance. Okay, cool. Add the three. 377 plus 246 plus 
73 cents. Divide that by three, the median number, right, is $4.24 a day times 30 days in a month. It's $127.30 a borrowing cost. This is assuming that he would owe Twenty-six thousand four hundred for ten days, nine thousand nine ninety for ten days, fifteen thousand two ninety for ten days. Is that really going to happen? No, right? Because money's going to be coming in and out of the fifty-three. In fact, because his expenses are so low, most of the time, the the balance is going to range around like ten, eleven, twelve grand, right, leading up to fifteen. So this number is not accurate. This is an overestimation. The reality is I could probably get that down to 100, right? Then $5,300 from that, I'm going to divide it by 2, right? I'm going to round it down and call it probably $1,500 a month from that 53. He could probably run through a credit card. I bet more, way more, right? But let's just use 1500 times it by 2% cash back rewards. That's 30 bucks. So this number is an overestimate. Could probably get it down to somewhere around 100 in reality. And then say minus $30 in cash back rewards. $70, which is $2.33 a day. And He's only going to owe in the line of credit for two months because by the very next month, because of his large income, does the line of credit not get paid off? The balance at 15290 15, plus um, the reality plus whatever the borrowing cost was, and he'll, he'll apply the cashback rewards to his credit card. Right, which lowers his credit card bill. That's how we do that. That's how I like to do that. I don't like to wait for the check in the mail. That takes too much time. So I just apply my cash back rewards as a statement credit right, to the credit card, which means less money comes out of the line of credit to pay the credit card, which means less borrowing costs. Oh, my goodness. This is good stuff. So by month two, he's prepping the next chunk. Why? Well, the balance on the car, what did it go down to? 42,873 minus 264 is now at 16,473 minus the payment, whatever it was, 743. Let's just stick to this number. 16,473 is what it went down to, right? Without including the payment of the month that we went through, by the second month, the balance, 15290 you could just minus 11000 is going to be somewhere around what, what the balance would um, end off around. So what's beautiful about velocity banking is I don't have to wait to hit zero on my line of credit before I make the next chunk. In his case, he can make the next chunk one and a half months later, probably two at max, pays off the car. So notice how debt snowball, we know for a fact, 3.8 months, right? Three and a half. We know that for a fact. Velocity banking can do it where the car is paid off in the second month, right? Roughly. But I still owe the balance, I just pay less interest. So by the third month, technically, the line of credit's at zero. But here's where it gets exciting, is now where we, this is where we turn the boosters on. Because the car's paid off, what's his focus now? The next debt. So this is where the compounding effect occurs with velocity banking, is now I get to go faster than debt snowball because I'm already on the student loans, right? So I'm already getting in here by month three and a half, four. As I, you know, if I was to map this out, right, 
I'm already attacking student loan before debt snowball. So that means I have a head start, more principal going to the student loan. Do you want me to like do it or stop there? Okay. Go straight. Right. Yeah. So this would, uh, let's say we're at the beginning of June. No, let's say we're in July, right? We started this in July. End of July, that's the balance. End of July. Next month, August, income goes in. He can't even put all his income in right at that point, but we know that it's like over time. Right, so the balance will go to zero, but it's going to go back up because he has to you know, pay bills. So plus 5,300. Balance should end around 4,180. That month, that next month, we don't pay the same amount of interest, do we? The following month, do we pay less or more? We pay less, a lot less. We, we cut that to... Near zero, right? Probably 40 bucks, probably less than that, right? So the number of borrowing costs starts to drop tremendously. You're basically borrowing at zero cost. That's the goal here, all right? So 4180 is what the balance ended in August. And remember, I'm overestimating here, right? Because I like room for error in your favor. 16473, assuming that we didn't account the payment for July nor August. So I'm just going to add that 16473 balance here. What happens to the line of credit? It goes back up, right? We didn't have to wait to hit zero. So now he owes 20,000. 653, car's done. I get that 850 back. He was he's actually paying 850. Right? If he were to get the line of credit, I would tell him, no, just pay the, the required payment and redirect that cash flow to the line of credit. Remember how we were talking about redirecting cash flow? Okay, cool. So balance is at 20653 What's our max chunk amount according to the rules of leverage? Right? The 26.4. Well, where can that money go? Just the loan, right? How about, okay. Getting a head start. Okay, so 26.4 minus 20,653. So we could send 5,000 to here. Right? Again, assuming whatever the payment is, we're not even going to factor it in. But now 5,000 adds to the line of credit. We bring that balance back up to 26.4. He could do more because of his cash flow. He could go up to 30 if he wanted to, if he wants to go a little faster. This is velocity banking conservative, right? So I'm actually going to go faster than what results I display. That's why I do this all the time because I, I want to be um, conservative with it uh, to leave room for error, mistakes, things like that. So this is all occurring in August. Right, twenty thousand six fifty three plus five thousand seven forty seven. So we take forty two grand minus five seven four seven. Now the student loan balance is at thirty six thousand two fifty three. With me, balance drop, line of credit went up. Okay. So this was. July, or end of July, end of August, right? Now September comes around. 26.4 minus income, 16.410, right? Brings it down to 9,990, right? Minus income. What happens to our expenses? 
they go down. Let's use the 850 number. So now his expenses are 4,450. So again, less money coming out of the line of credit. So 450 plus the 9,990. 4,440 bucks September cool by this is end of September so October begins and like mid-October what are we doing Chunking, oh my goodness, right? It's like every two months he has to chunk because of the amount of cash flow. So what we're doing is we're taking his cash flow plus capital to make bigger lump sum payments to the debt and effectively removing the interest tremendously, right? So this was end of September, right? And when you're at home, right, watching, even here right now, Map this out on the paper and see what does it look like. And give yourself a little uh, timeline, re re verify the numbers, go over it multiple times because um, it produces great results. So 16, 410 plus 450. Balance is at 2,480. This is October. And that's the balance on the student loan, assuming we're not making any monthly payments, right? So 2,480, what could we do? Let's make that next chunk. Might as well just chunk the full 26,4, right? That's not bad. So 26,4 plus 2,480, now we're at, 28880 The line of credit went up to 28880 Call the student loan company. Like to make a principal-only payment, please, of 26400 Thank you. Have a nice day. 36253 right. Yes, sir? No. So July, end of July, 15290, made our first chunk. August, income went in, expenses came out, bum bum bum. We made a chunk, paid off the car by the end of August. Balance is right back up to 264. Income for September goes in, balance goes down to 990. Cash flow increased. So my expenses are forty-four fifty. Ending balance September should be somewhere around fourteen thousand four forty. See how that occurred? So income went in for that month of September. Expenses came out. Cash flow stayed. Ending balance fourteen thousand four forty. Then from October, right, because it's October now, income goes in. If you did, you know, 1440 minus 16410, obviously you're going to get a negative on your calculator. Just roll with it. Then you add expenses, 4450 because in reality he's not dumping 16 grand in one shot. He's making 16 grand over 30 days, right? So, his balance will go close to zero, not quite zero, but close to it, and it'll end off around 2,480, right? As, as his balance is approaching this range close to zero, he should be, he should be on the phone, student loan company, getting ready to make that next uh, uh, chunk. So 
this goes up, right, in October, end of October, he would have made that chunk. Student loan balance is now here, 98.53. November, let's run it, 28, 28.38 minus... 16, 4, 10. Balance goes down to 12,470. When are we supposed to get married? October? Okay, so no, I didn't, I didn't beat marriage. But that, I'm going to get close. So unless, what, what, what was the other 80%? This is 20% mechanics. What's the other 80, 80%? The, the spiritual, yes, what was the thing, the 21 day fasting that you told me about? I said, I said, how do you, how do you, how do you map to show me the numbers? What, what happened? Like how? <laughs> so that's, that's you guys' ball game. Like that, I, I'm learning that. Um, so, okay. 28,880 minus income. Balance went to 12,470 plus new expense number, 4,000. 450. So balance plus expenses equals 16,920. What could we do? Looking at the balance. I'm not at zero though. Is that a big deal? Not a big deal. 9853. Plus sixteen nine twenty. Is that within a chunk range? It brings the balance up to twenty six seven seventy three. So right after they're married. <laughs> November, could we say November to December? Maybe he splurges on something. Maybe it delays. I don't know. Life happens, right? But <laughs> November to December, maybe he gets a little too excited. He's like, babe, the car's paid off. Look at this. I don't know. The love crazy. is going to be better when you got some more money in your pocket. <laughs> I'm going to interrupt you just for a second. How many could appreciate just what he just did right there? Now, the, the reason why this is important reason why we did it with Micah all the way through is because imagine Denzel sitting down with you personally saying, let me see what you have to work with. This is what, it, okay, I got 76000 that I owe. I got 94000 I got 124000 that I owe. I have an income coming in a month of $4,600. I got $5,600, I got $7,000, I only got $2,500 that I got it coming in every month. I'm on a fixed income. Okay, well, it might not be Micah's scenario, but you on your personal level, you should have a plan in place that you can see when you're going to be totally debt free. Pastor Mark, what's your plan? 32 months. Now, that might sound crazy to y'all, but in my mind, I don't want to have any debt on anything within the next 32 months. That's my, that's my number, all right? It was 36 months, what, in February or something, March or something, when, I was, when he showed it to me. So everybody should have a date considering what your income is, considering what your debt is, what your expenses. If you are serious about that, a lot of us are going to be shouting a little bit differently in the next couple of years. I didn't hear y'all say nothing to me. Okay, now watch this. Christmas is going to be easier. <laughs> y'all not saying that to me. Yeah, when people come to you and say, can I borrow $20? That ain't going to be nothing for you. Do you hear what I'm saying? But it's hard for you to see that if you do not have a plan in place. This man is giving you a plan which some of you have already, thank you, I'm seeing the cash apps come in. Some of you have already sent 500 in and more. Thank you for that, because you are serious. 
if you are serious and you want to go to the next level, after this, I'm, you know, when he's finished, he'll show you the options. Someone came up to me and said, can I do this with them over the next year or maybe the, the next lifetime? They actually came and asked me that. He's going to show you what you can do to do that with you personally over the next year or so. Okay, I'm sorry for interrupting. I just wanted to show that. Appreciate that. So I just ran the numbers with that snowball. If you just did 116.073, divided it by the cash flow, you get 10.44 months. That's not including what a person would pay on their monthly payments. So maybe you're looking at nine and a half months, maybe nine months, maybe less, right? There's other things you do. You cut back, right? All those good things. Velocity banking was, was six months, right? You're still going to owe money on the line of credit, but you're not paying interest. So d there's no cost, right? So you're done. Have a nice day. The thing, it's, it's off, right? It's paid off here. You, you owe it here in the line. And you're now well-versed in how to, to be a, a, a good borrower, an effective borrower in the economy, leading you to become a very good lender, right? I think there's a question. In the, in the, yeah. I guess it's not. There we go. Uh, quick question for you. So if I'm a person who cannot, um, you know, I don't have a tool, a debt tool, like a line of credit, or I don't have maybe that high income, what are the steps? Can you outline the steps that I should be taking? Is it the debt snowball? Is it Absolutely. getting a credit, you know, get my credit fixed first? Or yeah. what's the steps to get me to the ability to get the line right. of credit and right. then pay off the other debt? Yeah, so to play this game, remember, there's, there's definitely steps. There's education. There's a learning curve. Again, I'm Dave Ramsey certified. He would hate me, by the way. I'm teaching you all this. Stuff. This, is, this is satanic or, or whatever. I'm certified as a Dave Ramsey master financial coach. I went through it, right? I did all the this, this seven baby steps, so I agree on the, the, the basic fundamentals. I would revert to that for most people that are not ready for this. I usually revert to the seven baby steps, Ramsey solutions. There's another community that I like a lot called the FIRE movement, which stands for financial independence and retire early. It's kind of like the baby boomer generation with the Dave Ramsey movement. And then the millennials decided to amp it up what Dave Ramsey was doing because the fire movement does believe somewhat in this. Not necessarily the whole concept itself, but they do believe in using credit cards. There's a concept called credit card churning. It's basically what we're doing here. We're, we're running expenses through the credit card, getting cash back rewards. So the FIRE movement is all about living off of 50% of your income and saving 50%. So it's like a 50-50. They're pretty cool, and they talk about you know, creating cash flow and building a business. The, the Dave Ramsey community does not inform you on how to build a business and create cash flow in the 21st century. It's not their, their move. Their move is all about just like foundational. They uh, cater to workers, working people that have been working 30, 40, 50 years and trying to get you to retire via the, the stock market, mutual funds. But we are in the 21st century. There's a gig economy, the creator economy. There's the real estate economy. There's all these other different economies that exist where you can create a, a, a ton of wealth. So if you go to my YouTube channel, if you can go back to that, link for me the starting steps is velocity banking pregame work that is like nine videos where i lay out everything that i can think of where you can take those steps if you want to pull that back up on the screen um just to show him again it's the velocity banking pregame work I, I won't put it on here because for me to go through it all it i'm gonna basically everything we did in the last two days it, it would take a while, but it's just, it's right there for free. You don't have to pay me a dollar, right? I, I put all my life's work on public display right there for anyone that lacks financial management, discipline. They lack the money. Get it for free. You don't have to pay me a dime. Get it for free. Get positioned. Then you're ready to get serious. 
then you take on, like Larise Purnell said, with the five people, financial advisor. A substitute for a financial advisor would be a financial coach. Would you agree, Kelly? So that notion, right? You don't, you know, a financial advisor is um, showing you um, financial vehicles that require licenses to sell. That's the only difference between an advisor, financial advisor, and a financial coach. A financial coach deals with your financial traumas, right? Your mindset, right? A kingdom financial coach deals with the word in the world, out of the world, right? How you operate. You're not going to typically get that with an Edward Jones guy. You're not typically going to see, unless he's kingdom, then it's different, you know? So he'll take, but he's not getting paid to teach you kingdom, right? He is supposed to make Edward Jones successful as you're being successful. Does that make sense? Right? So any other uh, questions, right? Those the action step, go to the YouTube channel, right? Go there. If you click on home, right? Click on home. There, I'm doing a financial Q&A. On, let me see. There it is. Scroll that right there. Q and A with Denzel. July first, nine p.m. Eastern time. So, all this information that you gathered, then you start watching my videos. Come to a Q and A session with me. Right, that's free. I usually go like two and a half, three hours long. I'm just like Q and A, Q and A, Q and A. People are typing their questions. And you have the ability to call in where you can, um, typically I'd want you to be on your computer and you can speak through your computer uh, microphone. You don't have to be on camera, nothing like that. But you get on the call with me and we run a case study, right? And I have my whiteboard, right? Just like that video right there where, where that guy's talking. I don't know who that is, but he's, he's, talking and he's doing a, a whole case study, right? So if you were to click on that video and, and like, yeah, yeah, just like click in the bar or something um, and like go in the middle there, right? This is a mother, right? I, I, I just, I don't know how I remember this stuff, but I know this is a mom. Uh, income, look at that. Line of credit, 7.49%. This, this video was made in 20... Uh, I think it was like 2020, after the pandemic, I'm pretty sure. Um, maybe a little bit before. But look how I lay everything out. How you have to know your numbers. And then look what I do. Debt snowball, eight months, six days. Velocity banking, eight months, nine days, right? I actually show the, the different uh, uh, timelines, right? I show what she could be doing, how she could be, uh, leveraging and different things. The reason why the debt snowball shows eight months, six days, I actually, I did it without factoring in interest. So that you could see that when you do velocity banking, you're not paying interest. You're canceling the interest. That's why the, the timelines are, are like the same, right? But when you factor in debt snowball with interest, right, from month to month, right, and then you snowball, you go to the next bill, and then the next bill, you're getting hit with interest, which increases the timeline. So you can get out of that. Um, I want to respect people's time. Okay, we only got about 15 minutes left before we got to close out here. I had a whole nother presentation where I was going to kind of share with you some, like how we could be doing this collectively in the kingdom. For example, I think you're going to like this a lot. This is, this is a cool strategy, okay? And, and, and you're going to like it. Um, as you build a family, right, this is really cool stuff. This, this applies to someone that has a possibly a blended family or you're a household where it's you, you live with spouse, and maybe you have um, your spouse's mom lives with you, right? Or your mom lives with you. And then you have teenagers that work. 
maybe what's the earliest you can work here in this state? 16? Yeah, 14. So, so four, let's say 14, 15, right? Okay. So between 14 and 16 years old, let's say you got two kids, right? And they're both working. So that's two incomes, right? So we're going to do a family of five, right? Listen to this. Ready? Family of five. I have a client that I'm working with. They're a family of five. It's the, I'm working with the wife. She's the, the main person I'm working with. She's married, so she has a husband. She has mom, her mom, and her dad, and then her grandpa. All of these people make income, five incomes. Imagine if your household could come together collectively with all the income presented unto God, right? And say he provides you with a strategy and just, oh, boom, Denzel shows up, right? Starts showing you videos and you start looking. What this couple did, it really started with her. She shared the information with everybody. They all got on the same page. They were like, yeah, 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 yeah. This, this, this guy, I don't know who this kid is, but this is, this is some good stuff. And they got really excited. What ended up happening was they leveraged mom's house to get a debt tool. They got a home equity line of credit. Okay? They came together in common unity to achieve a common goal, become debt-free, the whole house. Grandpa's got steady income from, he's retired. He agreed, you can take all my income, put it in the HELOC. Dad said, all my income, put it in the HELOC. Mom, all my income, put it in the, husband and wife, all my income, put it in mom's HELOC. It's mom's name and the, and the dad's name, right? So they're the managers of the HELOC. The wife is the point of contact with the financial coach, me, Right? We're strategizing on the whiteboard together. I, even I didn't even know how to do it. I was tapping into the Holy Spirit. I was like, Lord, I don't, I don't, is this possible? Um, we mapped it all out, and we, we looked at everybody's bills, everybody's debts, and I went one by one by one by one by one debt, and I said, okay, 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 okay. Out of everybody's debt, the first debt we have to go after is mom. Mom's got this car, so we're collectively going to pull pull all of our cash flow resources together and pay off mom's car first. Why? Because it's the most effective thing to do amongst the five incomes. They all have debt. But amongst the five of them, mom's debt of the car was most important, let's just say, right? And we could gain the most amount of cash flow for that household, right? There you go, stop, right? So, so then debt by, so we went, mom, then we went to daughter, then we went to dad, then we went to a husband. And then like after I think a year or so, her brother came on board after the fact, he had debt. And we saw, now he had good income, but he had some serious debt. We evaluated and we saw that, hey, if we pay off his certain debt, it would give us an additional $600 for the whole ecclesia, for the whole household that particular kingdom, right? It's a kingdom of kingdoms, right? We're all kings, so we have domains over which we rule collectively and all together, right? Okay, cool. So they're all, so now it's a family of six that I'm working with now. They all come together, one debt tool to pay off everybody's debt, pooling all the cash flow together. How's that sound? Isn't that a praise and in, in, in worship right there? A hot, that, does that get a hallelujah and amen? <laughs> Isn't that cool? So there's so many different things that we could do together, right? Like I said, day one, cash flow together is stronger than separated. Just like people, we are stronger together than when we are separated. So if we can set aside our emotional 
doctrinal differences, our cultural differences, and just get incorrect righteous positioning under the kingdom. Oh, my goodness. Something just might break through, right? Financial breakthrough, right? Go ahead. Okay, yeah. How liquid is that? Like if you're in a position to purchase real estate and invest further, okay. how, how liquid is it? Let's say you paid in $100,000 into a policy. Day one, depending on how we design it, right? Because there's a, a multitude of different ways that you can design these cash value life insurance policies. But let's say we could have anywhere from somewhere around 85, maybe 88,000, maybe a little bit more of starting cash value, right? So I put 100 in, and I have less than what I started with. So I'm, I'm negative. We're clear on that, right? Because there's a cost of insurance. You're paying for protection over your life in case you die. You're paying for that death benefit. So there's a cost there, right? And this is a whole life. Whole life is expensive in the beginning, super cheap later on, right? So you, it's a long-term type of product, but comes with short-term liquidity, which is right here. Now, of that 85 to 88K, we could have access to roughly up to 90% of the cash value. Not bad. And the loan interest rates right now on... Uh, policy loans are between three and I want to say four and a half percent with with certain insurance companies. The ins the policies that I have with certain insurance companies, uh, one being Mass Mutual is one, another one Guardian. I have a policy with both. They're floating right now between these uh, rates. Right prior to 2022 the loan interest rates were between like 5 and 6%, right? So that's not bad in an environment of, say, 14%, you know, 10% with your other debts, right? And, and this is interest that the insurance company charges you, the borrower, but then they're also crediting you an interest rate on the total amount of money, right? Not what's left, but the total amount of the cash value. So it creates a bit of a wash effect, an offsetting effect, where maybe in the first couple years, your actual borrowing costs compared to three, four and a half, maybe is like one, two, one to two percent. That's not bad. And depending on what you did with the money, right? Say you borrowed. 60%, maybe 40, 50K, right? And you invested it and it yielded a 10, 15, 20 double rate of return. You can then pay the policy back. Other nice part is when you borrow from yourself, there is no terms. So I could pay nothing. I could pay a dollar a month, $10 a month, $1,000 a month. I can set it up however I want. Or I could pay nothing for as long as I want, right? What I like to do is just pay the loan interest so it doesn't compound itself. So I'll just pay the loan interest on whatever I borrowed in the insurance policy, and I, I wait till I get that full yield, right? Pay the taxes on the gains or whatever it was. Um, maybe the particular investment is a five-year investment, it's a seven-year, two-year, whatever it is. Once it's complete, I take the principal. I've already been paying the interest each and every year. So all I got to do is take the principal from the investment, put it back in the policy, and I keep the profit from the 40 that I borrowed, right? Well, four years later, you've been funding 100K a year, 100K a year. Now you got 500 grand in the policy, plus the profit from those last four or five years. Money is being earned in two locations, Right? Not bad at all. Good stuff? Okay. Well, yes, sir. Question in the back. Hello. How Hello. are you? Name and then... Jasmine. Jasmine. And as it relates to bringing all of your numbers to the table initially, 
I had some things removed off of my credit report, which could very well come back on at some point later in life, but they're not there now. Should I be concerned with those numbers when, um, as it relates to bringing all of your numbers to the table to begin this process? All your numbers, even numbers you don't even know about, as many numbers as I can get, right? That's what works best for me. All your numbers bring to the table. Unforeseen, foreseen, what's coming up, what's not coming up, unexpected, anything and everything. Spend as much time as humanly possible to get your numbers.